good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, commissioners, for your service to the commission, to those uh, present today as, as stakeholders and friends. Thank you to uh, a number of folks on the line. I uh, just want to say at the outset, please mute yourself. Uh, if you're not speaking, we'll try to manage that here. But uh, everybody uh, understands sometimes you forget you're driving or you find yourselves in the middle of another conversation. So uh, please be aware of that. Um, we have a quorum, as, as Tom has noted. Um, I, I will note for the record that uh, this meeting was properly advertised in accordance with the uh, Sunshine Law. And by, way, by way of notice, the Commission conducted an executive session to engage in quasi judicial deliberation to be adjudicated at the public meeting and engage in a client privilege communication earlier today. <laughs> Uh, and just to note, I believe Commissioner DeBunda has now joined. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we're just awaiting uh, one, one other. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and jump in uh, to this, uh, Commissioner. You have the August 29th meeting minutes uh, for review. Uh, and I should note as well, please, uh, for this. But I'll give you a bit to announce yourself and spell your name if you're speaking. Um, today, okay. Uh, then we, we have uh, a few minutes before you uh, have a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Ellis on the motion and Dr. Sweetie on the second. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of August 29 say aye. Aye. Those opposed, <clears throat> any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, financial report, uh, Tracy Cobble. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Secretary of Commissioners. My name is Tracy Gopal, T L A C B E G O T W A L T. Um, first of all, we'll be dealing with fund balance as of well August 31st, 2023. The new balance was $7,418,000. There was revenue of $943,000. Expenditures of $2,000,000. Seven hundred and sixty-three thousand, with an ending cash balance of five million five hundred and ninety-nine thousand. Moving on to the commission revenue expenditures for the month of August, um, there was revenue of nine hundred and forty-three thousand. Personnel expenditures of four hundred and forty-seven thousand. Operating expenditures one hundred and seven thousand. Bring the total expenditures for that month to 554000 Testing for the month of August, there was no revenue. Um, personnel expenditures were 426000 Operating expenditures were 1704000 Bring the total operating expenditures for total expenditures of 2130000 for promotion, um, there was no revenue in the month of August. Advertising expenses of fifteen thousand. Looking at the comparative um, commission and testing um, revenue and expenditures for the month of August um, in 2023 and 2022, um, total revenue um, is down by about fifty percent. Um, the bulk of that is made up of the fact that we have not had any resource development trust fund transfers. Um, personnel expenditures are up 2%. Um, operating expenditures are up um, 180%. Again, that's made up of other specialized services or, or UPEN. Um, there were three payments made in 2023 versus one payment for the same time frame in 2022. Um, and that's the bulk of what's making up that 56% increase in the total expenditures for the month. The remaining financial statements then pertain to the inspector funds. Okay, Tracy, thank you. Um, questions for Tracy on the uh, financials for August. Seeing that. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. And just to note, uh, Dr. Abloff has joined us as well. Thank you. 
All right, uh, Mr. Actions, uh, Tom, I'll turn to you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, motion to approve the sign of gas calendars for October 2023 for the harness track, Harris, Philadelphia, and Mohican Sun at Pocono Downs in the Meadows. Okay, Tom, thank you. We have a motion to approve the simulcast calendars as the So moved. Uh, second. Mr. Brenheiser, thank you. Mr. Rogers on the second discussion of this motion. Uh, hearing none and seeing none, <coughs> those in favor of approving the motion um, for the simulcast calendars for Harris and Pocono say aye. 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 Those opposed the same sign? Any abstentions? Motion carries, thank you. The next motion, Mr. Chairman, is to approve the sign of gas calendars for October for the thoroughbred tracks for parks, Bench, and Prescott Downs. And motion, sir. Okay. I make a motion, motion, please. Okay, thank you, Tom. And Commissioner DeLunda, thank you for the motion. We have a second. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, here we have uh, Commissioner Ruddy on the second uh, discussion. Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor of approving the simulcast calendar for the thoroughbred track say aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. The next motion serves to ratify the Bureau of Directors' approval for Naira Bets to switch total Zager companies from Amto to United to effective September 6, 2023. Tom, thank you. We have a motion to uh, to approve the uh, number five. So moved. Yes. Session. Mr. Sweeney on the motion. Mr. Ellison second. Discussion of this motion. Hearing none. Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the motion as stated, uh, say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you. The final administrative action is a motion to ratify the standard right bureau director's approval for the medals to conduct a pick eight on September 8th, 2023, with a 15% takeout and a 20 cent base wager and a forced payout and a guaranteed pool with the USDA for $5,000. Motions. Thank you, Sean. We have a motion to approve. Uh, we have a motion. So okay, uh, Commissioner Sweeney, uh, thank you. Uh, second. Second. Uh, Commissioner Ellis, uh, thank you. Uh, motion to second. Discussion. Uh, hearing none, we'll let you approving the motion to say it. Say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Okay, motion to approve. Thank you. All right, the adjudication. Uh, let's turn to council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This matter before the Pennsylvania State Horse Racing Commission pursuant to an appeal filed by owner and trainer Moises Andy Valdez of ruling number 22137PN of the Commission's Board of Stewards for Penn National Racecourse. The ruling issued on August 4th, 2022 imposed a 60-day suspension of appellant's license pursuant to the Commission's regulations after the Board of Stewards determined that on June 2nd, 2022, appellant was in possession of one hypodermic needle and six syringes, one loaded with medication on Penn National Racecourse grounds in violation of the Commission's regulations. Appellant filed a timely appeal of the Stewards' decision and on August 11th, 2022, the Commission granted the appeal and the supersedious but limited the issues raised on appeal to the penalty imposed. Presiding officer for the Department of the State Department Office of Hearing Examiners was appointed. Uh, the hearing was scheduled on November 9th, 2022, but was continued upon agreement of the parties. A formal administrative hearing was rescheduled and conducted on March 21st, 2023. The transcript of the hearing was filed on April 21st, 2023, and an order scheduling proceeding fees was issued that day. The parties all filed their respective briefs on this matter, and they have been timely received by the commission, along with the proposed adjudication and order, which is now presently before this commission for disposition. The following is the proposed order and may be taken as a motion. And now this 26th day of September, 2023, in consideration of the evidentiary record, including the exhibits, transcript, and briefs in this matter, it is hereby ordered 
that ruling number 22137PN of the Board of Stewards dated August 4th, 2022 is hereby affirmed. Okay, George, thank you. We have a motion to, uh, to, to approve the adjudication on that as. So moved. Uh, Commissioner Ellis on the motion. Second. Commissioner Rogers on the second discussion of this adjudication. Okay, I don't see any, I don't uh, hear any. Uh, let's vote. All those in favor of uh, the approval uh, the, the of the Valdez adjudication say aye. 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 Are those opposed, the same sign. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, to general reports, Tony uh, Swinon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we'll start off with Chris McElwain. Um, he's going to address for Meadows and, and National, both Scott and uh, Eric aren't here with us today. So, go okay, ahead, Chris, you're up. Thank you, Tony, uh, and commissioners. Um, I'll start out with the uh, Meadows. Uh, Meadows uh, has been uh, was shut down for uh, a week uh, over, over this past week, uh, where we did some track maintenance work. Uh, we only lost two days of training, and we're able to. Uh, uh, scarify the track and uh, get a little bit extra cushion going there. Uh, worked out well, weather cooperated, and we're back training now. Tomorrow will be our opening, reopening day, uh, and we'll be racing a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule through the remainder of the year. Uh, this week we have the Keystone Classic Finals uh, and just a couple uh, uh, special events that we're hosting during the month of October. We'll have again. Alzheimer walk on Saturday, September, or sorry, October 7th, uh, using the apron and walking around the track. Uh, no racing scheduled on that day. And then uh, October 13th, we have an evening card with a pink out and corgi races uh, tied in with breast cancer awareness. Um, for Penn National, uh, we went down on break uh, last Friday and will be shut down through October 25th. We're taking that opportunity to do uh, several maintenance projects, uh, both on the track and in the building. Uh, on the track, we are in the process of replacing uh, our uh, existing track rail. Uh, that's the original track rail that's been in there since the track opened. Um, we are going to a new PDC uh, breakaway type rail, which is in use at a couple racetracks right now. Uh, and uh, should be uh, better from a safety standpoint and from a maintenance standpoint. Uh, that should take us about a little less than two weeks to get installed. Uh, we're doing that working around training. Uh, we've adjusted training hours slightly to accommodate that, uh, but it should be up and uh, fully installed, uh, I would say by uh, the middle of October. Uh, inside the building, we are doing a, a replacement of all our tow machines through Global Tow. Uh, this is their new generation of equipment. Uh, we did a contract extension with Global Tow just recently and have been installing this equipment uh, at some of our other pen uh, gaming facilities. Uh, so that will be uh, done and tested and uh, in place uh, before we reopen on the 25th of October. Okay, Chris, for the benefit of the court reporter, could you just spell your, your name, please? Sure. Uh, Chris, C-H-R-I-S, <clears throat> Mackerling, M-C, capital E-R-L-E-A-N, from Penn Entertainment. Okay, thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, we'll go to Mike Zellinger. Thank you. Mike Zellinger from Pocono. Mike? Mike, are you on the call? Oh, we'll move on to Barry Brown. He's married, Barry. Hey, Tony, uh, Barry Brown, B-A-R-R-Y-B-R-O-W-N, Director of Racing. Uh, we have now moved, uh, after the uh, Labor Day weekend, we moved into our three-day-a-week schedule. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, it'll remain that way through the balance of 2023. We have a night racing event coming up Friday night, October 6th. So we're looking forward to that, and uh, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Uh, Matt Ennis from Prescott, Matt. Yes, hi, this is Scott Stoller uh, from Prescott Downs. Matt is traveling. 
uh, today and unable to make the meeting. Uh, I'm the operations controller here, so uh, he's asked me to say a few words uh, for Presque Isle. I'll spell my uh, last name or my name uh, S C O T T, last name Stoller, S T O L L E R. <clears throat> so we're uh, uh, as of today, we are uh, racing, uh, later today, day 61 of our 80-day meet. Uh, we're currently racing, uh, and we walk through the rest of uh, the meet, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days a week, uh, and we'll complete the 80-day meet on October 26th. Uh, we had our high leg uh, race card of the season last Monday, which was uh, the uh, our uh, Presque Isle Mile, and then our feature race of the year, the Presque Isle Downs Master Stakes Grade 2. And uh, just some highlights from the day. Uh, Ashley and her team from the PHRA were on site here for the beverage trailer and the team promoting of uh, the day of racing. Stu Kirschenbaum and crew were on site capturing drone footage from Keystone Films for advertising week. Steve Bick, a uh, racing personality, did his podcast uh, the day before and the day of the Masters to help promote uh, uh, the racing. And finally, TVG talent, Peyton Greater was on site for the day for their live broadcast. Uh, we did a million uh, five in total that day. It was a highlight of our season. And that's all I have. Okay, thank, thank you, Scott. We'll go to Joe Wilson for parts. Joe. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Joe Wilson, J O E W I L S O N. Uh, Saturday we had um, our PA Derby and Cotillion Day. Um, unfortunately, there was, uh, there was a tropical storm. Um, however, we were able to uh, uh, get all the races off. Uh, handled a little more than 17 million, which was the uh, second highest handle day we've ever had. Um, you know, Dave Osatag and his team put together a fantastic card. Uh, we had Ashley Eisenbell and her team were here, um, you know, promoting the event, supporting the event. Uh, want to thank the commission staff as well for all the all the work they did. Uh, we once again did a two-hour PA Derby broadcast show on uh, NBC Sports Um We had the uh, uh, several jockeys with with cameras. So we have sort of do that. If you, if you get a chance to watch that show on NBC Sports, that um, it, it'd be well worth it. Uh, TVG was also here on site, and we also did a lot of stuff with the Daily Racing Forum and the DRF and Espanol did a, uh, a Spanish broadcast um, of the races that day. So uh, all in all, a, um, a great result. Um, you know, could have been a, could have been a whole lot better with with nice weather, but what are you going to do? Um, that's all I have. Hey, you know, uh, special compliments to your track crew because the conditions, the weather was horrible and they did a heck of a job to keep the track the way they did and that you had all those races in. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they, they, they always do. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Joe. This is uh, Commissioner DeBunda. On behalf of the horse from you, and thank you for a great job. Thank you. Sam. Sam Biggle, P H H A. Sam, S A M Biggle, B E E G L A. Uh, I just wanted to say that we had our last two fairs last week. Uh, the, the weather wasn't very cooperative. Uh, we got five races in at Gratz, and then on Monday, it didn't look like we were going to get anything in, and Todd Shano and David Weiss did a fantastic job getting the track ready to go, and we raced all of them, and then we raced at Bloomsburg at the end of the week, and uh, 
everybody worked great. Wow. We had rain, but we got them all in. And uh, so, so uh, the fair finals will be on October the 9th at Pocono Downs. And uh, as far as I know, both tracks are still all great. Thank you, Sam. Kim Hankins, MSOA. Dan, were you on? I think there's some answer on that. Yeah, okay. How about Jeff Maddy? Jeff, are you on? Thanks, Tony. Uh, just Jeff, Layla Maddy, M A T T Y. I think Joe mentioned most of it, but I'd just like to thank the commission and the task force uh, with Tom and, and Jason and Izzy and, and their entire team. Uh, for a job well done, not only on Friday, but throughout the entire week. I'd like to thank uh, Dave Osajnik and Parks Racing and Joe Wilson. Um, together a great card. Uh, we did a lot of uh, joint efforts and collaborative efforts throughout the entire week. And obviously, the one thing we couldn't control was weather, but everything else I think we, we did a heck of a fine job with. So uh, it was a job well done. I appreciate uh, Commissioner Ellis for coming out and, uh, and all the support from the entire commission. And, uh, we look forward to countdown is on until next year and did a lot of great things this year and took some notes and uh, make a few adjustments here and there but there's some things that we found out definitely work and bringing out some celebrity athletes from the philadelphia area is one thing that not only spices up the attendance again the weather we couldn't control but brings a lot of attention to it uh, and it makes for good television on nbc sports philadelphia so a lot of good things we're on the right track and just hopefully we can get some some sun and uh some good weather for next year because we'll be ready. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Hi, Tony. Uh, Tony, it's Kim. Uh, I got muted by your system for some reason, but uh, uh, Chris did an excellent job of uh, giving all the points that are coming up and have happened here lately. So uh, my name is Kim Hankins, K-I-M-H-A-N-K-I-N-S, and I defer to uh, Chris's report. Okay, thanks, Kim. Kim's with the MSOA, too. Okay. Um, how about, do you have anything? Uh, no report. Media? No report. Jim or Mike Simpson from the Standard Break Readers? Mike Simpson, M-I-K-E-S-I-M-P-S-O-N. No report today. Okay, Mike. And Brian Santello, Brian. Secretary, Commissioners. Um, in your handout, you'll see uh, on the first page slot revenue transfers to the breeding fund. By the way, my name's Brian Sanfortello, S A N F R A T E L L O. Um, and you'll notice it says up uh, $569,000. Um, again, as Tracy had mentioned in her financials, that um, they have not taken out any money for uh, testing and the other uh, areas, fairs, etc. Um, at the end of June, we were down 150,000. Um, and, and again, we have another month coming on in uh, September without any transfers uh, taking out, which I don't think probably means about 700 or so thousand dollars. Um, so uh, we're just hoping that uh, um, they don't take it out retroactively when the budget's passed and they go from that point on. Um, okay, the September issue of the Mid-Atlantic Thoroughbred is, uh, is enclosed. It talks about the uh, PA Day for races from the 21st uh, of August. Fantastic day. We did uh, a little over $4 million in handle that day. Um, and uh, a lot of the aggressive shine. Um, so we had the second leg of our PA Sire PA Bread Steak Series on uh, Derby Day, um, and uh, it was uh, you know it, it was really great. There's a couple of real nice two-year-old um, one uh, Philly in particular, and, and one Colt that you'll probably be hearing from in the future. Really fantastic. Uh, um, runners. Um, plus vital uh, research, uh, uh, that's the research that uh, you approved the $50,000 uh, grant for. Um, 
we got the uh, results in um, and um, uh, basically what we're going to do is all those results are going to go out to the individual owners of the uh, horses um, and uh, uh, Mayor Robinson was um, was supposed to talk for a couple of minutes or so today, coming over that research, but she just came in from Hong Kong uh, last night, so uh, 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 she's going to address it at the uh, at the next meeting. Uh, but basically, uh, what the research shows is that uh, whether uh, our population uh, carry um, this uh, gene THR14. Um, and uh, um, we only had uh, seven uh, horses in the, in the population that actually carried the double copy of that gene, um, uh, which means they just have to make sure that they, uh, uh, when they breed, they don't want to breed to uh, a horse that also uh, carries that. Um, uh, the 77.5% of our population did not carry uh, either the double copy of that gene or single copy. So uh, uh, the, the results totally compared to the United States, um, the one area that we were a little uh, uh, higher on was the um, inbreeding, the recent inbreeding. And again, I want, everyone's going to get a, uh, a copy of uh, their results. Um, and uh, you know, which will show that they want to watch when they're breeding to a stallion if that stallion is too closely uh, in the loop. So uh, again, Mary, we will be here to answer uh, questions uh, next month. But I just want to give you just a little bit of uh, overview and thank you uh, for uh, approving uh, the research. Uh, we feel it's going to really help our uh, our population. Um, the last item is. Uh, uh, I've already um, talked uh, to Tom Chukas and to uh, George Augusto uh, in reference to a PA bred uh, status uh, removal from um, a horse um, bred by uh, um, uh, Mr. Stevenson, Cavanaugh Green LLC. Uh, we had a hearing. Uh, someone had told us that that horse was uh, not bred in Pennsylvania, it was, was bred in... Uh, I'm yeah. going to cut you off for just a second. I, I don't know if the individual was appealed it or not. They did not. They did not appeal it. Right. Positive. Yeah, I mean, they okay. had it. It's, it's, okay, great. Yeah, so I want to okay. confirm that. Otherwise, you put, I, want, I don't want the commissioners thinking. No, that's fine. Okay. okay. Um, so, it, uh, they had 10 days to appeal, it ended last Monday, the appeal period, so they did not appeal. In fact, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ellery, the horse that removed the PA bred status, uh, if you if you look that horse up, it now says uh, New Jersey bred rather than Pennsylvania bred. Um, so we had a hearing from Mr. Stevenson. Uh, we had uh, videos uh, showing uh, that the horse was bred in New Jersey. Uh, and so we removed the status and uh, of that horse. Um, and Mr. Stevenson cannot register any horses with the PHPA for five years. Any questions? Any questions, comments, or Brian? I just want to make a uh, comment and remind me of something, Brian. I think it's more than 15 years ago there was a horse that they changed the uh, PA bread. The name of the horse was bred in Virginia. I don't know if any of you remember that, but that was the actual name of the horse, bred in Virginia, and it was a PA bred. And took him the horse one of the maiden and an allowance race till they figured out that it wasn't bred in Pennsylvania. So I guess we've come a long way since then. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Chairman, there is one public comment, Dr. Langlois. Dr. Langlois, you're up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Name is Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Langlois, L-A-N-G-L-O-I-S. 
Uh, thank you to the commission for giving me a chance to offer a couple of comments. Um, in light of uh, a lot of the catastrophic injuries that have been affecting horses throughout the country this year, uh, and since it's become more mainstream, there's been a lot of talk about what can be done to hopefully preempt or prevent these from happening. And one of these that has shown a lot of promise is uh, our PET scans, which actually look at areas of the bone that are kind of affected by micro fractures or damage that can't be picked up by other diagnostic means. Um, a lot of uh, tracks are looking at having these scanning systems installed on their backside. It is very easy and quick to scan these horses, quicker than a bone scan. Um, and what uh, I would be, and, and everybody who's obviously concerned about the health and welfare of the horses, be requesting is that uh, these scanning units be placed on the backside of the three thoroughbred tracks um, as soon as possible. Now, of course, I, I don't know if conversations have been had regarding this already, but obviously the cost of these machines is roughly about $3 million each. Uh, so obviously that is going to be a, a area of contention. However, um, what I would ask the commission to do is go directly to the casino companies and the parent companies that own these racetracks. Um, $3 million, if you look at the net revenues of these companies, is pocket change to put in. And you really, it, I understand with ISA and a lot of the other costs that you know, are being incurred by various places. Um, if you look at, and this is just a quick Google search I did before coming in, uh, Penn National Gaming did $6.4 billion in revenue in 2022. Greenwood Racing, it's estimated between $100 and $500 million revenue annually. Triple Downs, $1.8 billion in net revenue. Um, there is absolutely no reason that these companies cannot pay that small amount of money to help guarantee the health and welfare of the horses uh, that are part of their product. Um, so I would ask that the uh, commission potentially reach out to these companies and see if we can get the ball rolling on that, uh, as this is probably going to be one of the better methods of helping to preempt and prevent catastrophic breakdowns. The second um, request that, that I would have, and this would be on behalf of Thoroughfan as well, and, and handicappers is, uh, based on looking at the minutes of the last couple of years, I'm going to assume that the racetracks are going to be submitting for approval their request for certain takeout rates uh, for the coming year. What, uh, looking at some of the takeout rates, especially in the multi-race majors in Pennsylvania are markedly higher than they are even in states or, you know, local to us. Uh, and obviously takeout rate is something that, uh, you know, is, is something that handicappers look at and, and gamblers look at as well. Uh, so what basically we would be asking is that when the tracks submit the requests for these takeout rates, that they apply, they also submit justification for as to why they feel the takeout rates need to be what they are. And that the commission look at these and ask for these so that it's not just kind of, you know, here's what we want to do and just blanket approval uh, for them. So, um, you know, if they can justify that, that some of the rates need to be that high, we realize that these have to get paid and that, you know, it, it does affect into the purse accounts. But even if we can look at some of these wagers that are up in the 30, 35% takeout range, where is the justification for that when it's usually not that high of their traps. So um, that's all I have. Thanks. Dr. Lugano, thank you. Thanks for the concern on the health and welfare and also the, uh, the uh, takeout rates. Thank you. We'll take under advisement. Uh, any other public comments? Uh, that's okay. it right now. No, sir. Nobody else. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, any other uh, business to, uh, to come before the commission? On screen, around the table. Okay. Uh, I don't want to. You want to take a motion to adjourn? Uh, I have a motion for uh, Commissioner Ellis and uh, Dr. Sweeney. Thank you. Uh, and everybody said yes. 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 Thank you.